just joined us. He's been with us for years, but he just joined us. Mix. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you everybody. I, I really appreciate each one of you guys. Uh, you know, ever since I met Joey and Junior at Mano that day, um, <laughs> it always felt like home. And ever since I, the first time I came, I still remember it like it was the first day and it just felt right. And I'm so grateful you guys have taken me in and, and my family. And you know, we can offer in return just uh, friendship, help with anything you need, and just so, somebody to listen to sometimes, which is what and Tom needs. So thank you so much to everyone. I really appreciate each one of you guys and uh, go Team Roots. Thank you guys. Right. So much. All right, today we're here with my guy Miguel, uh, recently promoted to Brown Belt at Roots. Uh, we're gonna have a talk with him. Uh, just some background, I train with this guy all the time. I've been around since we just figured out early Blue Belt days yeah. and I've got to see his game evolve and he's not the biggest guy. He fights at rooster weight. He's also not the tallest guy. You're like five, four, five, on four, a good day. five, three. I, I'm yeah. five, three. <laughs> Make myself feel better. Uh, but he has a very unique game and I've always really wanted to sit down with him and just ask like, how, how did you create this game? How did it evolve? Because you don't have a blueprint. You don't have someone you can just kind of copy. And there's not a lot of people near your size that are like, hey, this works for me that you can bounce ideas off of. So. First question, how did your game come to be? Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Alika, and you're right. I mean, I, I have to say, I, first of all, I consider you one of my re really good friends and, and somebody who I've always respected uh, his game and, and the game, and then not only that, but the way that you shared it. You were never afraid to share your secrets with people, and that helped me along the way to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Um, to answer your question, I mean, I've been lucky enough that I had a number of different professors and people uh, with knowledge, deep knowledge in the game who have taken the time to just show me things that actually work. And from there I've been picking up those little golden nuggets as we do, right, in our journeys. And, and those little golden nuggets have just really shaped my game. Did I, at Blue Belt when we met, figure I'm going to be like this at Brown Belt? Absolutely not. And, you know, I was just telling you off camera that I still don't feel like a Brown Belt because it's just so, so fast that it's coming. Um, but nevertheless, I'm enjoying the journey and I'm not here without those people who took the time to teach me and to show me the right way. And, you know, I still have a lot of work to do. I mean, by all means, and I think we will always be students of the game. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to learn. I want to learn. I want to make those mistakes and I want to continue to test myself with other folks. So um, we've all kind of heard that. Um, analogy like sometimes you're the hammer sometimes you're the nail to me when i watch you it feels like you redefine what it's like to be the nail like you're not fighting the hammer you're fighting the piece of wood that nail is going into you've embraced not being the biggest guy and you take advantage like you penetrate into the wood and you take advantage of all these these you know small spaces that the rest of us really can't get to before you can you launch attacks from really unorthodox places um and I can't find someone to replicate training with you. We all have a partner who's 5'10", 170 pounds. We have an anomaly, a guy who's, you know, maybe 6'2", 250, but you're the one guy I know that's 5'4", 120. Um, was there kind of like an epiphany or like a moment while you were, were training in the gym, competing, any, at any point where you really started to embrace being like what God gave you, you know, like, embracing your size as an advantage. Absolutely, I think that came from the very beginning. I think uh, coming from a running background, I've done marathons, I've done triathlons, I played soccer all my life, so I've always been an active guy. I know that I have gas in the tank and that I can last for a while, so that always gives me that confidence. Uh, so using that to help develop my game or maybe help cover some holes that I was trying to still just figure out uh, along the way that was a, a big way for me to continue to develop my style. I mean, I think confidence, I think being able to uh, maybe not beat the best, but last with them and learn from there and, and pick. And then so the next time we saw each other, I, I knew what they were doing, helped me also to just continue to learn more about myself. But 
there's no replacement for mad time. That's where I think I found myself in mad time. I mean, doing 30 minute rolls with no clock, no, with no worries about clock, just about rolling and learning. You know, I mean, I still remember during the COVID years that I was just rolling incessantly because there was nothing else to do, right? Yeah. So it was a situation where it just, I was hungry for that. And I think it made a big difference on me. I came out of that COVID era, uh, different person and wanting to continue to improve. So it's a, it's a long quest to continue to do that. You know that. It it's, definitely uh, is. You know, and, and the more advanced you get in this game, gosh, it seems like there's more questions. <laughs> and so I'm... I'm just keeping my head, you know, I'm keeping my head up and I'm putting myself in a situation where I'm also wanting to share what I learned so far with others and just continue to elevate everybody as a group here at Roots. Good, good. Um, you talk about how it's a long game. In this jiu-jitsu journey, there's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs. You, you maybe want to talk about some, uh, some challenges, some roadblocks you faced along the way from, from white all the way to brown belt? Sure, I think uh, the challenges are, is what keeps you coming back to training. You know, I, I like the challenges. Um, and Jiu Jitsu will definitely give you those roadblocks. Uh, on the mat, off the mat. Um, and it's a responsibility that a lot of people sometimes say, put up their hands and say, that's it, I'm, I'm done with this. And there's some people like me who will say like, I want more, give me more. So it's a situation where it's a lesson for life as well. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things. I mean, it can be anything if we're looking for specifics. Uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was more fluid in my roles, you know, that m maybe I wasn't, even though my guillotine does well with people, that maybe I wasn't relying so much on the guillotine to do things. So that's something that I've been working on to make sure that the guillotine is not everything, that there are other moves out there. And I think it's made me more well-rounded and it's helped me and my training partners as well because then there's that unpredictability of it that maybe I can choose position over submission, right? Secure right. things. Now that we're doing competitions with IBJJF and doing other, other things like fight to win. So right. Right. It's, it's important to keep that balance and to understand that, that there's always something to learn there. And always to remember that I'm not the best, I'm not the worst, I'm still working at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's a good way to kind of embrace jujitsu in its, in its whole. Like, there's some days where like, yeah, you come in here and you dominate everyone. There's some days where like, oh, that doesn't quite happen. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with the mental aspect as far as you've been into quite a bit of competitions, you've had some really good successes and you've had some not so great success. Yeah. Um, and you also have family that competes. Um, so I was there at you with, uh, I was with you at uh, Masters Worlds. Your son competed at Jiu Jitsu Con and all three of you were competing and it was like a constant roller coaster up and down. <laughs> Yeah. And seeing your family there, I mean, like, everyone's supporting everyone. You guys were carrying, like, 13 bags, coolers, like, preps for, <laughs> for between matches. You're bouncing between the yeah. roles. Um, how do you guys deal with the mental aspect of competing in jiu-jitsu? Yeah. Because it seemed like you were so polished. And uh, congratulations to your wife, Mel, by the way. Yeah. First she competition. Awesome. She yeah. placed at yeah. Masters World, Third which was amazing. World. Awesome. Um, but, but how do you as an individual and as a family, deal with the, the mental challenges, the mental aspects, uh, the emotional ups and downs of competing in Jiu-Jitsu? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a great question and that's something that we take a lot of pride on. We want to put our son in uncomfortable situations in life. He's 10 years old and he's been competing for a few years now. He's been doing Jiu-Jitsu since he was three. So the, the, the plan along the way was put him in something that he's going to be uncomfortable at so he understands that this is the rest of life you know and so to do it as a family to set the example you know sometimes i'll have success like you said and sometimes there's be some things that i'm just going to have to keep on working on but to me it's important to understand and to remember that it's not just me going out there it's my son is looking at that and if tomorrow i give up my son's going to have that example so for me there's no option but to continue to get get better you know, not because of a pride situation, but because I think that's the right way or the right path to set up for your kid. Whether he wants to do jiu-jitsu when he's older, uh, at a higher level, or he just wants to keep it in his life to, to give him that peace of mind, then that's entirely his, his choice. But I think there's so many lessons to learn from that, that that really comes easy for us. The, the competition, because we all pick each other up. We all know when that person, when the person's going, the rest of us become kind of the assistants. What do you need? What can we get you? Do you have water? Can we get you oatmeal? Can, are you getting good sleep? All these little things that we're teaching yeah. him now 
so he can understand next, you know, when he's 19, 20 years old. This is something that I've been doing all my life. So it's a learning experience, but it's something that we cherish as a family. Yeah, I think setting that good example for our kids um, and they can see it firsthand instead yeah. of making excuses or, you know, justifying or projecting onto somebody else. It's something, like you said, it's going to stick with them forever. And then being able to be in those uncomfortable situations, yeah. to deal with the wins, but to deal with the losses. Sure. Um, even if it's not jujitsu, even if it's your career or a relationship or whatever it is, it's good that they pick up those skills now. Um, so, yeah. great job raising your kids. Um. Thank you. It, it really, it's a, it's a labor of love. And you know, one of the things that I also just recently started doing is helping Roots with uh, their kids class. Okay. And so that brings me a lot of joy. And, but it also brings me something that I wasn't expecting and it gives me a different view on jujitsu. It allows me to step back and, and look at it from a more critical angle and realize more things about myself. You know, as I'm helping those kids, it's ironic because you think you're helping somebody, but they're actually providing the help for you. And I think the timing is the correct timing. You know, a new challenge, a new belt. So it's it's great for me to help pass the little that I know to uh, to a new generation and help them learn good habits from the very beginning. Yeah, very good, very good. And how do you deal with balancing that? I mean, because you still plan on competing. Yeah. Uh, your son still plans on competing. You're yeah. also going to be coaching in some capacity. How do you, how do you balance all of that? You know, it's uh, it's life, right? It's dealing with uh, schedules. It's dealing with training. It's dealing with. Uh, making sure that I also separate that part of being an objective coach and not just a dad who wants to see his kid taking first all the time, right? Building on the small part so the kid doesn't feel like he's being hounded by his own dad. So it's a situation where it takes a little finesse sometimes to be like, you know, part of me will be like, well, don't you want to train a little more? But I can see it in the kid that he's tired, that he's got other things going on, and it's just better to just say, we'll pick it up tomorrow, right? So it's... it's uh, it's something that I don't always get right, but that I'm definitely working on. And I think what helps me too is the fact that I have my wife along with, with it as well. And she brings that inner peace to all of us. And you know, when in doubt, I ask Melanie because Melanie will have the right answer and that's exactly what we will do. So it's a, it's a balancing act. It's, a, it's you're mixing parenthood with coaching, with schedules and you know and then on top of everything I have a day job too right, so right, right. it's a, a job thing right yeah just yeah away. so it's a, I run a company so it's a situation where it, making time for everything but it's really a labor of love and it's a situation where I wouldn't have it any other way we are all united as a family and this brings us joy and we will continue to do this for sure I think having like being rooted having the perspective that the family is the most important thing uh, it does bring everything back into focus. It, it, it really centers you as to who you are. I saw you at Worlds, unfortunately, take a pretty tough loss. Yeah. Um, and then, like, what, 20 minutes later, you were back coaching. And I remember we were standing on the sidelines, and it was like, you, 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 you talked to me about a small comment about that. Like, I know what's important in my life. I got to get back out there. I, I believe it was for your son. Yeah. And just hearing you say that, and like, it put a smile on my face. Like, here's a man who really understands what are, what's important in life. Um, so Thank you. it, it Thank was you. just really cool to see. Thank you, I appreciate it. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's part of you, right? It's a situation where you want, like I would give up any championship in the world to see my son be happy and get his goals at jiu-jitsu. Does that mean getting gold? It doesn't always mean that. It's just uh, having that comfort and that love for something that for me, it's gonna stay f with me for the rest of my life. So I'm gonna do it until I just physically can't do it anymore, right? And then I'll be in the sidelines, like helping people if it need be. But just, it's a, it's really, it's no effort. It's, it's something that I would do anytime for any of my family members or my extended family here at Roots who have shown me nothing but love and who I can never repay back for everything they've done for me. Good, good. Um, switching gears just a little bit, you talk about how you're mentoring students are there any mentors that you'd like to talk about uh, through your journey um, and just kind of explain may maybe the effects they had on you, jujitsu-wise or maybe just life-wise? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I had so many of them and each one of them has had a positive impact. And I will always be thankful to all my professors, all the people who have come into my life who have taken the time to show me something or who felt they could work with me and, and improve my game because they have, you know. So to say that this was all self-made, it would be an absolute lie. And so uh, respect is uh, due to all of them. I mean, I think somebody who, from the beginning, really, really helped me out was Gary Atude from Zapatero. He definitely uh, was always there for me. I met him as a white belt and uh, at UFC gym. 
And ever since then, the guy has always looked for me to continue to improve. I, I remember asking him one day, I was like, why do you care so much? And he just said, well, because I see myself in you. I see a fighter in you. So I want to help you struggle less with it. And, you know, and any time I would go to a competition, I would always have to have my session in with Gary so he can dissect my game and help me put together. Kind of like what you and I do together too, right? That I'm like, okay, I need somebody that I can trust. Somebody who can just like, won't have any qualms about saying, what you're doing here is wrong <laughs> and you need to change it, right? Because you need that person in your life. Right, oh. we do, right? Joey does the same thing to me, you know? This, it, you know he does it in a way that he critiques that, it gives me that positive critique on it, but it also comes to me in a way that just says, this is what we needs to change to, in order for you to go on to the next stage or to be able to be a better um, training partner to the other people you're, you're working with. So that's, I think that's the, the, the way that, uh, that I've been doing it. But again, it's, uh, I can't, I, like I still, I see the journey of Jiu Jitsu and it's a, I was a white belt and now I'm a brown belt and it's like a situation where it's like, it humbles you but it also makes you more committed to making sure that you're doing the right things. And, and you know, there's rocks along the way as well in, in, in it and you might trip a couple of times, but what matters is to dust yourself up, get up and continue to create that best version of you you possibly can. For sure, for sure. All right, slight curveball. Um, when we, we talk about training uh, in jiu-jitsu, you come from an athletic background, yeah. right? Running uh, soccer, football. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a difference in maybe philosophy or, or culture uh, between a martial art and a sport. Uh, but you came with an already established athletic background. What are your thoughts on that as far as jujitsu culture and, and things of the nature? You know, it's, uh, they're so similar, but they're so different at the same time, <laughs> you know? Uh, it's soccer, I mean, people get this idea of what soccer is about and then they go in to see an actual game and they're like, wow, soccer's rough. Soccer's <laughs> like, you're running all the time, you're getting kicked back and forth, and you could get headed by somebody. And it's the same thing in jiu-jitsu, right? You see, maybe you walk into a studio and you see two people rolling and you see this dance of two jiu going at it together, but then you get on it and you're like, wow, this was nothing like <laughs> what I was getting into, right? What yeah, I saw that day. For sure. And it's got its, its own different times. I think for me, the combination was just a perfect combination. That soccer background, that uh, running background, it allowed me to, to, be, to swim in deeper waters without having that uh, being afraid of, of sinking then, you know, to being able to last with maybe somebody who was a little more skilled than I was, but I was able to make up for it with my lungs or different things as I get a little bit better to defend myself. But, you know, I see a lot of success when people start picking up something else to do. They start lifting weights. They start running the treadmill. You know, a lot of people come to me and ask me, what, what should I do? And I, I always tell people, start slow. Start at your own pace. You know, the worst thing that you can do is try to be somebody else and then you find out that that's too hard for you and you end up hating it. And so you'll never go back to something like that, you know? So build your way up and, and you know, but I will never turn my back on somebody who's just looking to improve and to get better because that's exactly what, I, what I'm trying to do and what people like you have helped me along the way. Very cool. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up. You, do you have any, uh, anyone you wanna shout out? Anything you wanna talk about? Sponsors? Um, People, yeah, you know, I just uh, I like to say thank you to everyone who has come along the way, and you know, there's just so many people to to mention, and all my professors, all the schools that I that I work with, and you know, that I continue to work with. I cross train. I I'm very grateful to be here at Roots, and you know, I uh, have great relationships within the community as well. And you know, I like to just thank my family who is always there for me, and and who's always been my stronghold and my and my inspiration to continue to do this. And, and ultimately all my friends and all the community in Jiu Jitsu that have helped me get to where I'm at today. It's, uh, it's an honor to just be here and to continue to just be one of the guys. And uh, I look forward to continue to com com uh, competing in, in at the end of this year and next year. And then overall, just, just getting better, you know, getting better as a Jiu Jitsu and as a person, you know, it's a learning process in life and I think if we can combine that, then I think we're in the right path. Very good. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it, Miguel. Oh, thank and you, sir. And congratulations again. Thank you, sir. Aloha.